Global transport is a major consumer of the world's oil output, as well as a leading source of greenhouse gas emissions, particularly from carbon dioxide. Reducing both energy use and greenhouse gas emissions from transport could thus play an important part in solving both global fossil fuel depletion and climate change challenges. It is well recognised that the energy efficiency of electric vehicles decreases with range because of rising battery mass and that greenhouse gas comparisons with the internal combustion engine cars depend on the grid electricity source. Furthermore, uncertainties incur in both the primary energy source used and greenhouse gas emission calculations. Thus, it may not be legitimate to evaluate these in terms of a simple vehicle per mile basis because of spillover effects. Therefore, it's clear that comparing electric vehicles and internal combustion engine vehicles is much more complex than generally recognised. In 2012, Ma et al compared the greenhouse gas emissions from electric vehicles and internal combustion engine vehicles on a full life cycle basis for both the Californian and UK power grids. They found, as expected, that electric vehicles performed comparatively better in California than in the UK because of the less fossil fuel intensive power grid there. They further found that the greenhouse gas costs of vehicle manufacture were higher for electric vehicles than for internal combustion engine vehicles because of the requirements to make batteries. Building on this work, Onet et al. did an energy and greenhouse gas analysis for each state in the US comparing internal combustion engine vehicles, electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles. They found that both electric vehicles and hybrids had lower full life cycle energy consumption than internal combustion engines for the US overall, but also lower carbon emissions. However, hybrids were superior to electric vehicles for energy consumption in nearly all states. Finally, Hawkins, a few years later, summarised their findings as follows. We find that electric vehicles powered by the present European electricity mix offer a 10 to 24% decrease in global warming potential relative to conventional diesel and gasoline vehicles. However, electric vehicles exhibit the potential for a significant increase in human toxicity, freshwater ecotoxicity and metal depletion impacts. It's an important question to ask, therefore, to what extent can electric vehicles effectively address the global climate change and fuel depletion problems? It's difficult, if not impossible, to say definitively whether a major shift to electric vehicles would help save either energy or greenhouse gases compared with the continuation of conventional petrol or diesel vehicles. However, Indications can be found if we break the question down into its components. That's to say, we compare energy efficiency, greenhouse gas emissions, and the spillover effects of electric vehicles. Comparing the energy efficiency for different internal combustion engine vehicles is easy. Just compare miles per gallon numbers. But for electric vehicles versus internal combustion engine vehicles, both petrol and electricity must be converted into primary energy forms for example crude oil for internal combustion engine vehicles and electricity from coal-fired power stations. But a difficulty arises firstly when converting electricity to primary energy from different non-fossil fuels how do you compare the output from a nuclear power station to a geothermal power station or comparing the non-thermal renewable electricity outputs for example hydro or wind turbines. Different agencies use different equivalent factors and therefore calculating a given electric vehicle's efficiency will vary greatly depending on not just the source of the energy but who's doing the reporting. This problem can generally be avoided if we make a comparison on the basis of CO2 cost or more generally greenhouse gas emission costs. But then a new problem emerges. In nearly all published comparisons non-fossil fuel electricity, renewable energy and nuclear for example, it is assumed that these sources would generate zero greenhouse gas emissions, that they are zero carbon sources. But this is far from the case. Why is it true that these sources directly generate negligible greenhouse gases? It's not the case for their indirect emissions. For other renewable energy sources, Greenhouse gas emissions arise from the inputs for the construction, for renewable energy plants for example, or in the case of bioenergy, for growing the biomass. 
Since fossil fuels still account for over 85% of all commercial energy operations, most energy inputs for constructing and maintaining the renewable energy devices are still derived from fossil fuels. So far, we've looked at comparisons based on both the primary energy use and the greenhouse gas emissions per mile driven for each electric vehicle or internal combustion engine vehicle. However, such comparisons will not be valid if spillover effects occur. Positive spillover occurs if the promotion of one environmental benefit raises the likelihood that individuals will adopt other environmental benefits. Negative spillover effects occur when individuals introduce one specific pro-environmental benefit, such as waste recycling, but this leads to a lower adoption of other environmental benefits. Klockner et al. specifically examined such effects for electric vehicles in Norway. Electric vehicles are selling really well in Norway, given the lower taxes, the reduced road tolls and car parking costs that electric vehicles incur. When they reported, they found that if households have only one electric vehicle, they drive it less than a conventional car owner would. However, most households purchase electric vehicles as an addition to the household fleet, not as a replacement vehicle. These electric vehicle owning households drove their vehicles more than expected, most likely because of the subsidies I just mentioned. Hence, a negative spillover effect appears to be at work, which renders direct comparison of energy or CO2 equivalents for either vehicle types to be problematic. So where does this all leave us therefore? Well, firstly, energy efficiency comparisons are complicated by the many conflicting methods used for comparing primary electricity sources, such as hydro, solar and wind. And this problem can only become more serious if wind and solar dominate future energy supply scenarios. Furthermore, if increased use of electric vehicles in already renewable energy rich countries like Norway leads to a lower renewable energy export, then the system-wide greenhouse gas benefits of electric vehicles must be lowered accordingly. Thirdly, a new apparently green technology like electric vehicles generates spillover effects and these further complicate comparisons. Electric vehicles are certainly superior to internal combustion engine vehicles for reducing transport oil use and local air pollution. Overall, the conclusion must be that the energy and greenhouse gas benefits of electric vehicles is less than usually assumed. Only when interconnected grids are dominated by renewable energy sources will it be safe to claim electric vehicle superiority.